people of the world, friends and relatives, the only thing we have to fear is a fear of belts. Beltophobia. I'm wearing a belt right now. Do you want to see it? I'm not going to show it to you because there's, there's literally no way for you to show me your belt without making it awkward. Strike that, reverse it. Willy Wonka, Oompa Loompa, people of the world, friends and relatives, this is the song by Salvia Palth, Saliva Path, called Dream in Brackets. I don't know what the brackets represent. It's like a matrix in math class. Never understood the concept of the matrix. They go like, if you put brackets around a group of numbers, then that's a matrix. How do you feel about that? And I said, I don't I have no emotion around this. And then they said, okay, well, it's going to be on the test, and you're going to do a terrible job with it. And I'm going to go like, well, now I have some emotion with it. I just I feel frustration. Why don't you explain to me what a matrix is? I'm not talking about the movie. I'm talking about the math thing. What is, guys, in the comments? What are, Someone explain the matrices to me in a way that makes any sort of sense. Oh my god, I hated school so much. I made a list of things to talk about for the song so I didn't lose track. So first up is the tuning. Uh, Salvia Palth uses a, an unusual, like, some sort of a drop C tuning for this song, where the top string is tuned way down to a C. And I think some of the other strings are changed as well, but it's really hard to tell. It's really cool to get that low C at the end of the song, but other than that, I don't think it's worth it, and also I could couldn't figure out what it was. So we're just gonna be in standard tuning and no one's even gonna tell the difference. So that's number one. Number two, I use a pick when I play it. It kind of, like, at first listen, you might think that it's one where you use your fingers and go. But the truth is, I don't think using your fingers actually makes it easier. And the other thing is if you listen carefully, you can hear the attack from the, the pick on the string. So I don't think it's a finger picking song. I believe it is a pick picking song. Okay, the other thing I wanted to say is that this song is just a bunch of uh, layered parts together. There's like a bass part, there's a main guitar part, and then there's like two or three or four extra guitar parts with everything piled on top. If you have a looper pedal, then you can have a jamboree of a time using your looper pedal. I'll give you some tips and tricks for that later on. But what we're gonna do is learn a combination of the main guitar part the bass part, and a couple of the important lead guitar parts. Let us begin. People of the world, friends and relatives, if you think this is a cool song, why don't you write your own cool song? I have a course on writing cool songs at marinmusic.com. Link in the description. Check out my songwriting course by Stuart Alexander Lehman Brown featuring Marin Music Center. There's also other... Th okay, look. We're going to start off with a C major 7 chord. Put your ring finger on the 3rd fret of the 2nd string from the top. Put your middle finger on the 2nd fret of the 3rd string from the top. Play the 2nd string from the top, plucking down. Then go to the next string, the 3rd string from the top, and pluck down. Then go down to the next one, 3rd string from the bottom, and pluck down. Then go to the 2nd string from the bottom, and pluck down. So we've got... Funky Binka. Great job. One more time. Bunky Binka. Okay, fantastic. Then you're going to pluck up on the bottom string, pluck up on the second string from the bottom, pluck up on the third string from the bottom, and then pluck up on the third string from the top. So we're just doing four notes plucking down and then four notes plucking up. Look. Bunky Binka. Bunky Binka. Play with me and karate chop a Rochambeau. Bunky binka, bunky binka. What is it called when you play a chord, but you play it one string at a time? That's right, it's called an arpeggio. That's your vocabulary word for the day, and it will be on the test. People of the world, friends and relatives, after you go bunky binka, bunky binka, you start it over again, but you just play the first four notes. You just go bunky binka, and then stop right there. And then now we're gonna switch to the little like bass transition thing. You play second string from the top, and then lift up your fingers and play third string from the top. Those last two notes are gonna be slower than all the other notes we've played. So check it out. We've got bunky pinka, bunky pinka, bunky pinka, bunky. Play it with me, here we go. 
Bunky Binka, Bunky Binka, Bunky Binka, Bunky. You're doing, you're doing an oak. You're look. How do I say this? It do, you're, it doesn't. You're, um, you're doing great. What I would like to do now is learn the next part of the song. Why am I trying to make this video as long as possible? After those two slow notes, we need to go to an E minor chord. Top string, open. Middle finger, second fret, second string from the top. Ring finger, second fret, third string from the top. And the bottom three strings are all open. You're gonna play sort of the same pattern we did before. We go bunky binka, bunky binka, down, 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 up, 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 up. But we're gonna do the top string first, then skip the second string from the top, go straight to the third string from the top, and then down to the next string, down to the next string, and then up on the bottom four strings. So that's bunky binka, bunky binka. And that's what we do on the E minor chord. Yes, you. Uncle Stewart, I don't understand. You told us to put our middle finger on the second fret of the second string from the top for the E minor chord, but we're not playing that second string from the top at all. So why did you make me put my finger there? Great question. The reason I had you put your finger there is because this is just the traditional way to play an E minor chord. And you're better off getting used to just going to the regular chord than trying to like keep a finger off just because you don't need it. That, didn't, that was a poor explanation. The other re main reason is because we're playing a lot of notes really fast. There's a very real possibility that you might accidentally play that second string from the top. If you don't have your finger there, it's gonna sound bad. If you do have your finger there, it's gonna sound fine. What I should have just said is it's a, as a precautionary measure, just in case, but instead I spent literally 45 seconds talking about that. People of the world, friends and relatives, we're gonna do that picking pattern on the E once. Bunky binka, bunky binka. Then we're gonna go like this. Oh, I for, kind of actually forget what it does. Got it. After you do the pattern once on the E minor, then you play the top string open, and then immediately put your pinky on the third fret of the bottom string, play the bottom string, wait for just a moment, then get rid of your pinky and just go funky binka. Bottom four strings plucking up. So the whole thing on the E minor is funky binka, funky binka, funky, funky binka. Play it with me, here we go. And funky binka, funky binka, funky, funky binka. So let's play the whole C major seven to E minor part all the way through, nice and slow. One and two and karate chop a Russian bow. Binka, bunky, binka, bunky, binka, slow, slow, bunky, binka, bunky, binka, bunky, bunky, binka. Uh, amazing work. Then. You play that exact same thing, exactly the same, one more time. <sighs> We're actually almost done with the main thing of a jig. So after you do that twice, then we have to go to this F power chord. Now the way I like to do it is I like to have my thumb play the first fret on the top string. My ring finger plays three second string from the top. Pinky plays three third string from the top. I just like using my thumb for stuff. And that's what she said. But you don't have to use your thumb. You can use your pointer finger. It looks like a bar chord, not a bar chord. It's just an F power chord. First fret, top string, then third fret, third fret, whatever fingering you would like. You're gonna play the top string, second from the top, then pluck up third string from the top, up second string from the top. So that was bunky binka. You're gonna do those four notes. Bunky binka, bunky binka, bunky binka, bunky binka, quattro times. That's Spanish for four. Surprise you didn't know that. Let's practice it. Get your F chord ready, whichever way you wanna do it. One, two, here we go. Bunky binka, bunky binka, bunky binka, bunky binka. Great, amazing. Then we switch to a kind of strange G5 chord. Put your ring finger on the third fret of the top string. Play the top string, then skip the second string from the top. Play third string from the top. Then 
play the third string from the bottom, plucking up, then play third string from the top, plucking up. So that was bunky binka, and you do that two times in a row. Dos. That's Spanish for two. I'm surprised you didn't know that. Bunky binka, bunky binka. Then put your pointer finger on the first fret of the second string from the bottom. This is like a G sus chord now. It's it truly literally is called the G sus chord. G's Jesus chord. Play second string from the bottom, then play third string from the bottom, then play third string from the top, and then go back to the third string from the bottom. So that was bunky binga. Can you see it? Look. Bunky binga. Then get rid of your pointer finger and do the exact same picking. Bunky binga. Guys, starting from the F power chord, this is what we did. Bunky binka, bunky binka, four times, here we go. Bunky binka, bunky binka, bunky binka, bunky binka. We've done it. We've completed the main riff to the song. You just repeat that. I think they do it a total of either four or five times in the song. I do not recall. Probably should have counted. Do it as many times as you feel like. Don't let people tell you what to do. It's a vibey song. Just go off the vibe of how you're feeling in the spur of the moment. Okay, let's play that whole main riff all the way through. Kind of like the hardest thing about the song is it's fast. They're going like. <sighs> let's not do it that fast. Let's go like. That's perfect. One, two, here we go. Again! I did that thing where I messed up, but then I acted like I was just gonna stop anyway. It's a classic move, a classic trick for, for making it look like you didn't make a mistake. It's the guitar playing equivalent to like when you're walking and then you trip and then you just kind of start jogging for a second and it sort of looks like you didn't trick. Um, do you guys do that? You're like playing a song for your friends and you make a mistake and then you just act like you were gonna stop anyway. You go, uh. So that smells like Teen Spirit. Uh, do you wanna hear any other songs? I dropped my pick on the ground. So we've, we've finished the main riff. Now let's talk about some auxiliary things you can do for this song. Auxiliary just means extra, I think. I actually don't know what auxiliary means. Hey Siri, what does auxiliary mean? Thanks. So the first extra thing we should do is we should talk about the ending. I didn't talk about the ending. Uh, at the very, very, very end of the song, you do this thing for the last time. And then it goes like this. It just plays the C major seven chord, bunky, binka, bunky, binka, but you slow it down and as you approach the last note, you get super slow. You go. Done. Okay, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Now we need to talk about the actual auxiliary stuff. First is, while that main riff is going on, there's also a bunch of like noodling going on. Just some like extra guitar notes, just adding atmosphere, adding little melodic things. So if you're playing with another guitarist, one of you can play the main riff while the other one does some noodling. You also, what I think is fun is I like recording myself playing the main part and then playing back the recording and noodling on top of it. I mentioned that if you have a looper pedal, this song is perfect for it. Let me show you some of the extra stuff you can add on top. So, Salvio Palf is using mostly the C major scale for the noodling. Let me show you this scale. Please play for me first fret, second string from the bottom. Then play third fret, second string from the bottom. Then on the bottom string, play open, one, three, five, seven, 
and eight. So that was second string from the bottom, one, three, then bottom string, zero, one, three, five, seven, eight. Zero, one, three, five, seven, eight. Let's play the whole scale all the way up and then all the way down. Nice and slow. Here we go. And boom, 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 bang, boom, boom, backwards. Great job. Now let me tell you a couple other things. Uh, that, what, when I say you noodle around with that scale, what I mean is you literally just use those notes and make up some crap. You go. Did it sound like America the Beautiful for a second there? It did, right? Um, so you just make stuff up using those notes. Just make it up. Make it up. I'm very done with this video, but I'm but I but I'm apparently not done. Watch out for the first fret on the bottom string. That note, we're going to call that the avoid note. It's part of the scale. It works with the song. It shows up occasionally in the song, but more often than not, this note sounds kind of stupid. So, try not to use it too much. Now, a note that you want to use a bunch is the 7th fret, especially bending that seventh fret. Throughout, in many places in the song, you hear that seventh fret on the bottom string. That little bend, check it out. See, sounds like the song. So as you're noodling around, watch out, don't play that first fret too much, but play that seventh fret bended note quite a bit. One more thing, I swear to goodness we are almost done. Throw some harmonics in there when you're noodling. The harmonics, the harmonics are where you just very lightly touch the string. You don't push, you just touch. The harmonic notes that are gonna sound the best are the 12th fret on the bottom three strings. So like, see I'm just, just touching the string right at the 12th fret. Also, the bottom three strings on the seventh fret harmonic. So here's an example of some noodling you could do. Imagine the song is going on. Okay, we've got the vibe now. Check it out. We're done.